Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host Lisa Roman, broadcaster and analyst for CBS Sports. On today's episode, the NWSL is back, so we've got some games to preview for you all ahead of this weekend slate of games. And we also have the Euros finals to chat about a little bit and some other fun things like Copa America. Lots of global soccer still going on, and we're going to chat about it all. Before we get into everything, a quick reminder. Listen, we've been telling you this all month, and we just want to remind you one more time because voting ends july 31st so thank you so much if you've already put in your votes for us because we've been nominated for the best female hosted podcast category in the people's choice podcast awards to vote for us just go to podcastawards.com slash app slash sign up and then you can toggle down to the female hosted podcast category and select attacking third we've also been nominated for the best podcast at worldsoccertalk.com so head on over there and put in your votes last day to support us and these awards, July 31st, we appreciate everybody coming through and showing us some love. Lisa, how you doing today? I am so good, Sandra. It is crazy that we're almost towards the end of July. Well, we are at the end of July, yeah. but we're almost done with it, um, especially when we look at these two awards that we've been nominated for, which we are so thankful for, that the voting ends on July 31st. And at July 1st, when we found out about these, I was like, oh, we've got a month. We've got so much time. Uh, but it is here. The end of July is here, which means that August is upon us. And then in terms of like the soccer schedule, the summer of soccer that we've been like so jazzed for is nearing its precipice of finals for the Euros this coming weekend, um, Copa America as well. Like it is a, a full perfect storm of everything in the women's soccer world because the NWSL is back as well. I'm a little, I, I'm jazzed. I'm jazzed. I'm all over the place. I'm ready to go. How are you doing? I'm with you. Look, we said we want to hang out and get together early this week. Just, just wanted to just, have all our excitement we're like you know we're too late we can't wait to go later let's go in the morning let's grab our favorite morning beverage hang out with each other by extension hang out with our listeners and chat a little bit of women's soccer and uh you know we're gonna start with nwsl because it had a bye week mm -hmm. and we had to pump the brakes on that a little bit and you know quite frankly everybody needs a break <laughs> every now now and then so you know, with NWSL taking a pause, just sort of coming off of the CONCACAF qualifiers, we were like, cool, this will give us a chance to focus on maybe just a couple of specific women's soccer tournaments instead of every single one happening exactly. at the same time. So that sort of felt uh, kind of nice. But because it's it's had the bye week, because we technically had a little bit of a bye week from it as well on the show, we're going to start with NWSL. Let's take a look ahead uh, at maybe some of the news before we start jumping into some picks of these weekend's games. Uh, Matt, a big trade happened. Madison uh, Pogarch and Tegan McGrady trade between Portland Thorns and San Diego Wave FC. Player for player trade here, Lisa. Yeah. We don't see those too often anymore <laughs> in this league, uh, but sort of feels like a little bit of a mutually beneficial trade here. Do you have any you know big takeaways or reactions when you first saw this drop? Yeah, this definitely the fact that it was a like for like trade and two players that are defenders outside backs versatile uh, can play a little bit higher off the field, honestly, both of them. But um, it, in terms of the teams, I think this is a beneficial trade for both sides because Tegan McGrady being at San Diego was getting minutes, but not a lot of consistent minutes and maybe stepping into the Portland Thorns fold can help her uh, get some more consistent time and, and playing um with the thorns because we saw her with Washington spirit and then getting traded to San Diego uh, during the expansion trade was huge for McGrady. She was going home. She's from Southern California and not even been there a year with this club and now going North to Portland, maybe on a personal level, perhaps not the thing that team McGrady wanted in that sense, seeing as she did get to go home for a few months to be in Southern California. But I think in terms of the players, individual growth on the pitch and in the sport, for McGrady to go to Portland is huge. She, she can learn a lot in that environment and with those types of players. And then Madison Pogarsh, Maddie Pogarsh, Poe, going to San Diego, that's huge. We did um, an interview with Poe. 
<laughs> her girlfriend, Kristen Westfall, who was also at San Diego Wave when Portland and San Diego were playing each other during Pride Month in July and or in June. And um, th this was I wonder if this was like happening in that moment, if those talks are already happening, like, can we get Poe to Southern California? And it yeah. happened. So I'm super happy on that personal front to see those two uh, back together. Um, this is in terms of like purely non-soccer though. <laughs> yeah, no, they were super cool to come on and, and chat with us during, during our Pride Month celebrations. And that was something that came up, the fact that they were, you know, on different teams now and, and how they were navigating that. So I, yeah, I definitely thought of that because uh, they were both guests on our show one po at one point. But yeah, I definitely was also just sort of like curious. I guess that's like my main word in terms of like my reaction to it uh, maybe more on the san diego wave side of things uh i was just curious about it just because uh you know tegan mcgrady was a player that that franchise made a move for pretty early on uh they made their announcement of their first ever player saying that hey we signed abby doll kemper and then shortly after that they started to add a couple other pieces as as other clubs were having conversations ahead of the expansion draft. And Tegan McGrady was one of those very early pieces. Um, and we saw this a lot from both Kelly expansion sides, quite frankly, that they wanted to engage in those. Con they were willing to engage in those conversations pre, you know, expansion draft. And um, in particular with players who had local ties to, to California and Tegan McGrady was, was one of those players. So to sort of see this kind of mid season move happen, I was just kind of like, okay, like that's, that's interesting. Cause it's, yeah. McGrady was, it, it wasn't a player like, uh, you know, that wasn't necessarily not seeing extended minutes with the wave. We've seen the opposite of that. We've seen a player sort of grow and uh, over time with, uh, with this team. So to sort of have this move, I was like, okay, I was like, well, player for player, like swap perhaps. Um, and I just hope that it's, you know, again, mutually beneficial uh, for both sides. But I think um, because it's two teams at the top of the table, you know, and, right. and two players, you know, similar positionally, it's going to be very interesting to see how that all kind of plays out for either side in this second half of the season. Uh, Racing Louisville uh, also adding uh, to, to some of their depth as well. Zanetta Wine, uh, national team uh, replacement player, signs. It's a 31-year-old 30, uh, defender out of West Ham United linking up with Racing Louisville as well. So maybe, you know, trying to take a look at how they can sort of bolster up their things ahead of the second half of this season. Uh, so curious to see how uh, Wine is going to head and, and slot in for racing, uh, if, yeah. if if they see extended minutes, uh, quite quite frankly, uh, true. We've been, we've been seeing some non uh, some national team replacement players not necessarily getting a ton of time, but kind of uh, as depth signings throughout the league. Yeah, and we'll start to see those national team replacement players um, dropping off the roster. It's rather like they're either getting signed like Wynn was um, with Racing Louisville or their contracts will be terminated. A couple players at Racing Louisville, they're they're leaving the clubs now after their stint during this national team replacement player window. Um, so just a lot of new faces, perhaps, or familiar faces back from national team play. <laughs> For a lot of these clubs, which will be very exciting to see because the last two weeks of NWSL play, so three weeks total, have been without their a lot of their internationals. And we're starting to see those players trickle back in, uh, which makes for hearty competition in the NWSL for next weekend or this weekend, rather. Yes, it does. Let's talk about it, though. Let's make some picks. Uh, let's chat a little bit about where some of these teams uh, left us before right. before the break. Uh, let's let's go down this uh, slate of games here. It is North Carolina Courage versus Washington Spirit kicking things off on Friday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Then Racing Louisville FC versus Portland Thorns FC Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Saturday with a doubleheader at Chicago Red Stars versus San Diego Wave, kicking off at 8 p.m. Eastern, Angel City versus Owl Rain, Saturday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern. And then we've got Gotham FC versus Houston Dash, Sunday at 5 p.m. And Kansas City Current versus Orlando Prime, Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Let's uh, let's start with the West Coast, Lisa. Let's start with the game that's going to be kicking off the latest out of all of these matches this weekend. Games that we're going to be keeping an eye on. This is one of them. Angel City versus OL Rain. Who do you got in this one and why, Lisa? 
Okay, I love this matchup. Angel City is hosting OL Reign. It's the second meeting between these two sides. Uh, the first time they played was in the, the second week of June, and OL Reign won. That was a 1-0 win for the Reign. Uh, that was the game, for those that remember, that Megan Rapino got a red card heading <laughs> off the pitch, uh, just to, for those that need something to jog their memory about that match. Um and, and when we look at this, every team in the NWSL has is coming off of a bye week. However, Angel City and North Carolina Courage are two teams that did not play the weekend before. It was uh, due to a COVID game. That match was postponed between North Carolina and Angel City. So Angel City has almost had three weeks of, of rest or of time to prepare without games. Um, their last home game was July 9th against San Diego. They won that one two to one. But Tyler Lucy received a red card in that match. And since Angel City has not played yet, Tyler Lucy will be out for this match for Angel City against OL Reign. OL Reign is coming off of a loss, 1-0 loss to Kansas City. Uh, but we saw the return of Tobin Heath in that last match. So between these two sides um, and Angel City hosting it, um, I think this is probably one of the most exciting games. We, we jumped yeah. right to it to start this weekend. Um, and, and in this match, because of, of OL Reign coming off of that loss, and when you look at the standings between these two sides, OL Reign number six, Angel City number seven, they're right in the middle of the pack. In terms of a pick, despite Angel City hosting, I, I think I have to pick OL Reign in this match to win because uh, – Angel City's without Tyler Lucy, and that's huge. And O.L. Reign, meanwhile, is getting back so many players that have been gone with the U.S. team. You think Alana Cook, Sophia Huerta, Rose Lavelle. Um, so I, I go O.L. Reign taking the win in this match. What about you? It's tough. I was going a little uh, back and forth a little bit uh, on this one because, look, I'm not trying to act like – um, this isn't a team sport and it's it's all down to one player, but you have to make adjustments when certain things happen and certain scenarios come into play. So we saw Angel City make a move for Sydney LaRue in, in light of losing Chris and Press to an ACL. And it's gonna I'm curious as to the adjustment that Freya Coom is going to make losing a player like Tyler Lucy, because this is a player that they already sort of made an adjustment with positionally, sort of removing her from that kind of front line core of players uh, in the attacking and pushing her back a little bit in that in that and fullback position and sort of get an attacking minded player um out on the flank to be able to sort of get some different looks for them so i'm curious as to how they're going to make uh the adjustment there i know I, I remembered when when you and i were in la we got to see junendo play much lower as well and we were just sort of like wow uh, they're covering a lot of ground here um in that position. So I'm, I'm wondering if, if we might see something similar and um, quite frankly on the rain side of things as well, because that's a, that's a ton of players that have yeah. uh, you know been out or coming off of a, of a major international tournament. And while they had a, a week off, uh, it's not just some of the American players. I'm, I'm curious if, if Jordan Widom is going to be available, uh, the Canadian for, for this team, this is again, another player that they made a move for um, when they also made a similar move for Tobin Heath. Are we going to see increased minutes from Tobin Heath? This Laura Harvey has talked about how that's a player they're trying to work back yeah. into form. So uh, I think there's a lot of unknowns really kind of on, on both sides. And uh, listen, I've got this one as a draw. I'm starting off wow. this whole episode with our picks with a draw because I've not swayed one way or the other. And I just like that there's been a bit of time between these two teams. We're talking about two teams that faced each other in the Challenge Cup, had that familiarity, then had that, you know, that early match in, in June against each other, which wasn't a lot of time post Challenge Cup. But now we're, we're heading into August. It's, it's end of July. There's been some changes on each side. So I'm really excited to see what these sort of new look kind of teams look against each other after they've had these prior matchups between each other earlier in the year. And uh, I think we're going to see a couple of bankers. I think we could see some of the Rue kind of, you know, break through yeah. on, on one side. I think maybe we could see Bethany Balser do something cool as well, but I'm not too sure if either team can sort of finagle a win, you know, Angel City are also at home and this is a place that they, the bank is a place that they've made it incredibly tough, a place for opposition to play in uh, and both teams sort of feed off of that energy 
but I think it's going to be an exciting game. But I think after dark, NWS after dark can leave us with a, <laughs> with a with a draw. Uh, but hopefully it's a it's a it's a wild one. We'll see though. Uh, let's take a look ahead at this next match that we're going to be keeping an eye on this weekend. We're going to be taking a look at uh, racing Louisville versus Portland Thorns. Let's look at that one. Uh, let's take a look and, and see and go through these picks here and uh, and and see who you got, Lisa. So Racing Louisville versus Portland Thorns. This is the first matchup between these two sides. Um, but Portland, they are they've been dominant in in their form most recently. They're seven games undefeated, but their last two wins have been a truly impressive wins. They're coming off of a five nil dominant defeat over Gotham and then just three matches before that six nil over Orlando. So the wins that Portland has received and, and won in the last few games have been true insane games, scoring many, many goals, getting shutouts. Portland's in some type of form right now, honestly. Uh, Racing Louisville will be hosting this match, though. So this game is at Lynn Family Stadium. But Racing Louisville is coming off a nil-nil draw uh, versus San Diego. I'm going to get right to it. I think Portland's going to win this one. They um, just also made the trade for Tegan McGrady, so we could see minutes from McGrady in a Thorns jersey, which, frankly, I would love to see. Um, but between these two sides, even though it's in Louisville, at, at Lynn Family Stadium, I think Portland's just been dominant this year. And, and because it's the first matchup, we're, we're perhaps starting to see um, these teams that will play each other in quick succession, right? So these two teams play each other, and then again in two or three weeks' time, they play each other again. But ultimately, I have Portland winning this one, Sandra. What do you have? I'm with you, Lisa. I think this is the game where I looked at and I said, you know, at least I might probably make the same pick here. And I'm looking at Portland for similar reasons that you've already stated. There's just something about this team as they're going to look ahead to the second half. I mean, making the move for, for Tegan McGrady, you know, I'm, I'm curious as to if she's going to get the start in this, in this game or if she is someone that they are looking for depth on their, uh, on their sort of defensive side of things, because this is a team that has pretty good defensive core, <laughs> quite frankly. And, um, what we've seen from head coach Ryan Wilkinson is sort of utilizing the three back at times and wanting to see their wing back wing backs get higher. You would imagine that somebody like McGrady could sort of fit that profile uh, pretty pretty accurately. But I'm also looking at other players like 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 Quika, like Klingenberg, players who have sort of been in the system already. How does that look, right, with with McGrady um, as part of that kind of collective as well? So I would love to see it. I just don't know if we will. Um, players need time to get acclimated and, um, you know, make that transition into uh, a new team. But I think in terms of the attack, if we do uh, see the return of Sophia Smith at a full 90, um, I think we could probably see some goals <laughs> come to fruition uh, just based on her presence on the pitch alone. Uh, Louisville has, has, sort of, has sort of been showing and rearing kind of those defensive you know issues I think that we've seen from this team before in the past and as they are sort of looking ahead into this second half of the season they're one of these teams that I'm keeping an eye on because as most clubs are looking to make a run in this second half this is a team where I think if you're Louisville you're like looking at the schedule in front of you and you're hitting the mode where you're like we've got to pick up every single point that we can from here on out so i expect a battle in this one but i just think portland has more in their depth to come out on top of a win so i'm also going with portland as well so portland's number two in the standings right now and racing yep. louisville is 10 so yeah in terms of picking up points racing oh, louisville, they've got to get uh, they've got to at least get one out of this match um and portland wants to continue that seven game unbeaten streak it's it's tough this is a tough battle these two yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, we're both on thorns, so we'll see if we come back here if we're correct. Uh, I always get nervous when we go the same team because we tend to come back and say, so so this happened instead. Uh, but we'll see how that shakes out. Uh, let's take a look at North Carolina Courage versus Washington Spirit. Lisa, I love that you mentioned the standings just before we transitioned into this one because we're looking at that as we look at the second half of the season, we're also taking a look at maybe this bottom half of the table and teams that are perhaps maybe not necessarily hitting desperation mode, but they know that they have slim amount of time to make an impact. And we've got Washington spirit currently at number 11 on the standings and the North Carolina courage 
at number 12. So we've got almost last yeah. and dead last in this one. <laughs> and North Carolina Courage are hosting this one. We've seen a lot of games this year between these two teams. Who do you got in this one and why? I love this matchup. It's a, it's a rematch of the Challenge Cup final, um, and it kicks off our weekend. So Friday, 7.30 Eastern, this match is being played. Um, but remember, in that Challenge Cup final, North Carolina won. And now we see North Carolina dead last in the standings. Um, I mean, but both bottom of the standings and with not a lot of points. You look at Washington, 10 points, and North Carolina, 8 points. San Diego and Portland, who are at the top, number one and two, they've got 22 and 21 points. So the disparity between 10 and 21 and 8 and 22 points is huge, huge. When you look at that in terms of points, it's very – it's a big battle. It's an uphill climb for both of these sides to get points, get back into this, and make their way to the top six because top six makes playoff. Right now, Oa Rain is sitting in that number six spot. They have 17 points. So that's just a look at, like, the overall standings and kind of how that unfolds. Uh, but – this is the second meeting in the regular season between these two sides. And, and as you mentioned, Sandra, North Carolina is hosting. Um, the first time these two teams played, it was a shootout, three to two. North Carolina ends up winning this match. Um, but there was a penalty kick that Ashley Hatch scored. Uh, there was an extra time goal is how North Carolina got the game winner by Kaylee Kurtz. Um, but as I mentioned with Angel City, North Carolina – had a, a bye week for the last two weeks. Their last match that was supposed to be played against Angel City was postponed due to COVID. So it's been nearly three weeks off for North Carolina. The last game they played was July 10th, and that was a 2-2 tie to Chicago. Meanwhile, Washington, they're also coming off of a tie. Nil, nil to Orlando. I am waiting for Washington to get on the winning side of things. They have yet to win a game uh. since opening game in the regular season. How? How is that possible? Now, with a lot of internationals coming back um, at this point of this recording and, and this live, we don't know the status of Ashley Hatch. She left the CONCACAF W Championship early, uh, dealing with a little bit of back muscle problems. So she headed back to Washington. So uh, that's when Vlach Wendonofsky brought in Sam Coffey. So she's hopefully been getting some recovery with her doctors in Washington, dealing with people that she knows very well. Will we see her in the match, this match against North Carolina? Frankly, I don't know. I would be surprised if we do. I think that um, when you leave an international tournament early due to injury, it's probably a little bit more serious than what you want to let on. Yeah. So between these two sides, Washington got the uh, loss against North Carolina. So North Carolina got the best of Washington the first time these two teams played. Is this the moment where Washington gets their second win of the regular season? I think yes. I think that this is the game for Washington to do it. If they, in terms of standings, if they lose to North Carolina, they then become the number 12 team and the bottom of the standings. And I think that's a little bit more daunting for a Washington spirit team. That is the reigning NWSL champions. And just looking at that and, and a battle, individual battle between those two, they don't want to lose this match. Um, so I, I think Washington's going to get the win. You know what? I, I was it was tough for me taking a look at this. It was game. hard. I, I it was it's it's I think a little bit harder than than just sort of looking at paper and and making assumptions of who may or may not be available. I think you bring up a good point about Hatch. I'm I'm with you in that. If it's you know back back injuries are a very delicate thing. You know, and I would imagine that if it was enough to pull to pull the player out of a tournament like CONCACAF W Championship, then I think it might be enough to, to sort of keep an eye on. And I think there's a possibility that uh, we might not see Hatch play or available yeah. in, in this in this game. And again, you know, we're doing this preview and this is ahead of, of availability reports at the drop that we usually get to see about, you know, maybe 12 hours before a, before a game. Um, so I'm a little curious as to the other players who were involved in that same tournament. I mean, the spirit had a ton of players with the U S women's national team. We're talking about Rodman Sanchez Kingsbury didn't, didn't see time. So I imagine we'll see her in that, but Emily Sonnet, Kelly O'Hara, a ton of players, right? Basically what is typically 
uh, you know, six or seven players and they're starting 11. So I'm curious as to how the minutes uh, management is going to go there for, for these players or how they feel kind of coming off of several weeks away from, from their club team. There's also that side of it too, right? We're going to be watching a lot of these players get integrated back into their teams and how do they look after spending a ton of time away from their, from their club team. It takes a little while sometimes to get the, the chemistry back in, in going. So We'll see how it goes. I almost this was the game where I'm like, maybe it's gonna. I should have saved my draw for this one because that's the other thing. We've seen these two teams play out to a couple draws against each other. That Challenge Cup that sort of shook out the way that it did, kind of coming down to some very last minute, uh, last minute things. So there's a ton of familiarity. I think that could sort of have the the writing on the wall that it would be something like like a draw. But I think I'm for just for parody's sake here. You and Spirit, I'll go North Carolina Courage. Watching this even team without, play a couple, even without the Bina and Caroline, yeah, even without them, because uh, okay. watching this team play a couple weeks ago against um, against the Chicago Red Stars that at the time had a pretty massive undefeated streak going on, and they extended that streak against ultimately against North Carolina Courage to, to nine games. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're seeing we're talking about this phase of the of the season. This is one of those teams that I'm talking about. We're seeing teams hit a certain type of I'll think of a better word for it on the next episode, but we're we're watching them hit a certain type of desperation mode. They're they're looking at the get the second half ahead of them. And again, they're trying to pick up every single point that they can. And this is a team that was without Caroline and the Vina back then. And they went up two goals against the Chicago Red Star side. That is a very difficult team to sort of break down. And um Unfortunately, <laughs> they ended up dropping all three points and walked away with a draw because we saw Chicago do what they did against them. But that is the type of energy I think that we're going to start to see this North Carolina Courage side play with. We saw them come out and play relentless, bring the energy, press, 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 m- you know, push the issue. And I think that we're going to keep seeing that from the seat because, again, we're they have to pick up points where they can. I, I'm also going to say that the fact that they're hosting this one, you know, might come into play a little bit. Sometimes there's that little bit of extra factor where it's like, you know, there's something about being at home, staying in your routine, sleeping in your own bed and just having to wake up and, and go to game day, not worry about the travel on your legs. Um, you know, this is a team that's going to be hosting Pride Night. I know that there are players that are very excited about that. Uh, you know, they want to put on a good performance, you know, I'm sure for for the home fans who are going to be out there in, in recognition and celebrating that. So I'm going to go with North Carolina Courage in this one. I don't know if we're going to have a shootout just because of the personnel that's going to be missing. But again, I do want it on record that this was a game that I was thinking about a job, but I'm going to be going North Carolina Courage <laughs> in this one because uh, I, again, I just went with the draw to start to start things off in the episode. But we've got some more games to get through for this weekend slate of games. Three more, in fact, and we're going to be back after a quick break to make our picks. You ready? They're coming. Hang on. Showtime. I won't sleep until he's in the ground. Go, 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 go! What are you waiting for? I'm jumping out a window! Oh, sorry. Good luck. All right, we're back to break it all down. We've got three more games to get through in this one. Let's start with a big one, Lisa. It's Chicago Red Stars versus San Diego Wave FC. These two playing at Soldier Field in Chicago, Illinois, as part of a doubleheader. And you can catch it all on Twitch, question mark. But listen, let's make some picks. <laughs> let's make some I wanna picks. Hear, I want to hear your thoughts on this because Chicago has been hot. <laughs> They've been hot. And this is at Soldier Field. What are your thoughts on this match? I'm hyped toward it. Mm -hmm. I'm really hyped toward it. There's something about um, there's something about Chicago when they get an opportunity to sort of play to um, to a big event. I'll just say the this is a this is a franchise that has, you know, we've seen in the past they've sort of had moments where they've maybe plucked out a game and they've put their effort towards it to try to make it a big event. We saw 
really cool turnout sort of post 2019 World Cup. It was the first game back for a lot of World Cup players on both sides of the pitch. It was Red Stars versus Carolina. Almost 18,000 in, in, in Bridgeview. So it was really cool to see that. Um, and that was just on their own. There wasn't a doubleheader, I believe, that was involved in that or anything, if I remember correctly. But um, th this isn't the first time that this team has sort of, you know, played a doubleheader with with the fire. And those tend to have, you know, some pretty cool turnouts. And the Red Stars tend to really get up for those kinds of, of matches. So I'm excited for everyone coming back. I mean, I'm excited for the possibility of seeing the return of Alex Morgan to, to club play on the San Diego wave side of things, obviously in the Chicago Red Star side of things, Alyssa Nair and, and Mal Pugh back in the mix, Bianca St. George's as well. So I'm a little curious as to what we're going to see, honestly, from Casey Stoney's side, because again, we, we started this, the top of this episode talking about the trade, um, kind of player for player uh, move there. What are we going to see from, from this back line? Are we going to see the insertion of, of Naomi Gurma once more uh, for, for San Diego? If we do, I think that's very smart, you know, or this is a player who can absolutely has been going up against Mal Pugh all, all during uh CONCACAF, quite frankly, right. When the, when the teams sort of have their, their scrimmages against each other in terms of preparation for, for those types of matches. Um, I'm of the belief that the Red Stars will probably rise to the occasion and play the moment. I'm going to have them picking up a very narrow victory in, in this one. But when I'm looking at these defenses, Lisa, I think it's really going to come down to that. I think coming off of that sort of lopsided scoreline that the Red Stars had in Houston against the Dash, we're talking a 4-1 loss that snapped that nine-game undefeated streak. Um, a little, I won't say curious, but the timing of it, I think, sort of made sense. We, that's a long time to go undefeated. Streaks are meant to be broken, right? And we sort of saw a combination, I think, of things in that game. We saw Ebony Salmon finally have the sort of breakthrough game, right? Some, like, we've talked about it. We said, Sometimes you need a little bit of adjustment <laughs> once you make a move from one team to the next. And I think Ebony Salmon had a couple of games under her belt with a dash and then finally was able to get that breakthrough. And I think you also saw a combination of, of, of maybe the fact that there was a break, you know, ahead of some teams. I think we saw some, some of the Red Stars players kind of look a little lackadaisical in that match, quite frankly, a little bit of senioritis, I think is maybe what we could refer to it as. And that's, you know, now that the break is over, reset button has been hit. We're gonna get to see uh, what kind of, what comes down to this. The last time these two teams played was very early in the season, and even then they sort of played each other kind of evenly uh, as well. But San Diego coming out on top of that one. But when I'm looking at this one, I'm gonna give the edge to Chicago Red Stars. How about you? I agree. I'm I give Chicago the win in this one for so many of the factors that you mentioned off the pitch, or rather on this specific pitch, being at Soldier Field, having a doubleheader with the fire. Uh, this is a huge game for the city of Chicago, for the soccer community in Chicago. And these players know that and they want to perform. They, it, It's almost like if they do well in this game and they put on a show and they make it entertaining, uh, the likelihood of getting more and more fans than coming to Bridgeview is higher. So it, it's and these players know that. They're aware of that. They're aware of the type of stage that they are stepping onto. Uh, the return of players from international duty is huge for both of these sides, frankly. The players, uh, neither side was missing a large quantity of players, but both were mis missing uh, big quality in the players that were gone for the last month or so. Um, but San Diego Wave, they're still number one. This is going on week 11, well, 10 uh, – game days in the NWSL where they are at number one in the standings. Now they're coming off of back-to-back -back winless matches. So the, the slump, if you want to call it that San Diego is in where they haven't won in two games is, is a slump in some sense based on how this team is doing yet. They still remain at the top because they're squeaking out one point here, one point there. Um, Chicago, as you mentioned, that's, that's a pretty rough loss. They're coming off of four to one to Houston, but there's something about Chicago where they find the back of the net, right? If you look across the regular season games, they've only been shut out once 
in this regular season. And that was by Washington Spirit early in June. So they score. Chicago finds a way to score. Sometimes it's in a 4-1 loss against Houston. Um, sometimes it's in a 1-0 win. But they find a way to find the back of the net. This game, I'm going to give it to Chicago. But I could also see it very well ending in a draw. Um, maybe a 1-1 draw, maybe a, a nil-nil, very, very narrow. Ultimately, I think Chicago defensively is going to come out with the upper hand, um, having Lissonero back in net, having the back three that they've been playing consistently with and going up against the San Diego team that they know and that they can scout pretty well with Alex Morgan in that front line. Um, Sophia Jakobsen probably will not be back. Not not entirely sure about that one, though. Uh, but ultimately, I give Chicago this win over San Diego. I want to see them jump the standings a little bit. I love it. Music to my ears. We'll see how it shakes out and what these two teams provide at Soldier Field as the backdrop. Look, two more games to get through, Lisa. Let's talk about New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC versus Houston Dash. Who do you got in this one and why? This one has been, this one's tough for me. I'm not going to lie because both of these sides have had so many inconsistencies throughout this season. In terms of standing, Houston is higher up. They're number four right now in the standings. They've got 18 points. They're coming off that big win over Chicago, but there's, so many ups and downs for this Houston side. Um, I think the return or rather the, the jump start of Ebony Salmon for this Houston side has been huge for them. If that can continue to um, be a spark for this Houston side, I think they will continue to climb throughout the rest of this regular season. Now a team like Gotham, they've struggled. They're number nine in the standings. I know some people in our chat are asking about Gotham. Is this the second half of the season where Scott Parkinson can turn things around and get things going? I, I don't, think so and I haven't seen it there's no evidence that proves that Gotham is going to be a team that somehow bangs out win after win after win every single week climbs the standings finishes in the top four I just historically Gotham is a team that has done that now this year I just haven't seen enough from the Gotham side to be able to do that. They're coming off of a really tough 5-0 loss to Portland. Ooh. However, Gotham is hosting this one. I mean, that was a brutal loss. Ugly. Five goals. Five goals against Portland. It's it, That's one of the things that if Houston can get on this scoring run, right, if Ebony Salmon can find the right pockets, if Shea Groom can get on the ball, if their defense and Naughton and Prysock can be locked down and Jane Campbell can be really good, Houston can be a team that – just dominates, but they, they lack so many consistencies. Now they've gotten a new coach coming in. Um, they've had time with him. They've had training with him. So between these two sides, I think Houston's going to take the win, even though this match is being played in Jersey um, and Gotham is hosting it. I just, there's not enough evidence for me to see Gotham come out with a win in this match. Listen, I, uh, I, going back and forth be between these two teams and I was settling in on on Houston for a number of reasons I looking at this Gotham side I think you could sort of make you could try to make an argument that they've got a couple games in hand it's a similar argument you can make for North Carolina quite frankly they've yeah. also got several games in hand you know as they sort of look ahead to this second half of the season, it's they find themselves in a, maybe a little bit of different positions compared to some other teams who have, you know, 12 or 13 games on, under their belt. You know, but looking at some of their break or some of their July, I should say, you know, without their big impactful players uh, for Gotham, like a, a Christy Mewis or Margaret Purse or an Ifeoma Anamanu. <sighs> I just didn't see, you know, like that, maybe that, that switch turn on for Gotham. I thought, you know, maybe this is the time where you see a little bit of a difference. Sometimes a team needs a little bit of a shakeup like that. And sometimes, um, you know, having those kind of key players that you rely on be away, maybe forces other, you know, uh, players to, to step up in different ways or, or provides new opportunities for, for players who weren't used to seeing extended minutes. Um, and just based on the couple of games that we saw, I just wasn't convinced of that. I mean, yeah, a five zero blowout against, against the thorns is, is, is did not show a lot for me. 
uh, quite frankly. But they've been you know, nearly blown out like that before. Early in the but season, that's, San Diego beat them four nothing. They've yeah. So I'm gonna say this isn't this is, that win, That's not unfamiliar. That's not unfamiliar territory for that team. But even that win against uh, Racing, you know, was a two one win. And I don't know if I'm gonna be, you know, in the second half of the season. I just don't know if I'm gonna be impressed when a bottom half team beats another bottom half team. Yeah. <laughs> that's not something that's going to teach me something new about a team. We've that's raised our bar, our standard yeah, higher. That's, that's, you know, that's not something that's going to teach me something new about a team. That's not going to, you know, immediately make me be like, oh, yes, this is going to be the catalyst in which, yeah, you know, yeah. this propels them forward because the, they got that win. It was a two bottom half teams, you know, going and then they, they went <laughs> and, and got a five zero whooping from, from Portland. So it's, it, there's just... There's been a lot of inconsistencies for this mm -hmm. Gotham team, and I imagine that with the return of some players, we'll continue to see that in in this game against Houston. Houston also is a team that I don't I don't think um, is is a team that you can look at and say that they're scared on the road. That's the complete opposite of Houston. They don't they're not intimidated when they go away, and that's a I think an important other part about this. I think that we're thinking at. So you had. This team had the return of Maria Sanchez, you know, back in, in into the mix. And then they had Ebony Salmon have that finally that, that sort of breakthrough game, the type of game that you wanted to have for this Houston Dash side because she was looking for a little bit of a fresh start. And um, being able to sort of see that performance and hopefully she'll be able to pick up on or build on that kind of momentum that, uh, that Houston had against Chicago. And I imagine being on the road isn't going to maybe shake that from this team. So I'm, I'm going with Houston in this one as well. So I think they're going to get the win. I, I don't know if we're going to see another blowout. Like we saw, I'm, I, 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 don't uh, I feel that. like, I feel like Gotham doesn't want that to happen two weeks in a row. Um, but again, this is, I, I agree. I don't think it's in different in different stages of the table and, and Gotham could come out and play with some, some desperation and, and we could see a very, entertaining match in that capacity but again i just don't know if they have enough to to get the win in this one i agree i mean i i said houston as well and in terms of a dominating win or a big score disparity i don't see that on either side gotham doesn't want to go five nil against portland and then a multi-goal scoreless loss against houston back-to-back -back weeks and i also don't think houston can do that right they went four one against chicago can they score another multi-goal game yeah maybe two but I just, in terms of consistency, if if a lot of the pressure is being held on one person's shoulders, that doesn't work. They've got to share the wealth a little bit more. Um, so I still have Houston, but not a giant win by any means. Yeah, same here. We'll see how it shakes out. Last one for us on NWSL picks. We've got Kansas City Current versus Orlando Pride. Lisa, I just want to throw it back real quick because you and I, when we did our offseason, very early predictions, we said, listen, we want to keep our eye on Kansas City current. We think they could be a top five team this year. And you know what? At the timing of this, the timing of this preview, they're sitting at number five right now in the standings. We, we do month to month standings. So after this week in State of Games, we'll go through everything and see how it shook out during July. But right now, just wanted to point that out as they get ready to host. Orlando Pride, again, another one of these teams who are going to have to take a look at each match in front of them and try to pick up as many points as they can. But but Lisa, I have a feeling that we might be leaning similar ways in this one. I'll let you go first. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, give me a shout out back to our early predictions. We said Kansas City was going to be high. We also thought Orlando was going to be pretty low. And yeah. they're in the second half of the table, but they're only at eight right now. They're fighting. Right? It, they're they're hanging right there. They are hanging in position. Uh, they're at eight. Gotham is at nine. Racing Louisville, 10. Washington, 11. North Carolina, 12. So they've got some like heavy hitters underneath of them in terms of Washington, North Carolina. Um, but Orlando hasn't – they're undefeated in their last three games. They're coming off of two ties and one win in their last three. This Orlando side has been one that's been um, – surprising right all of a sudden we watch a game and they sneak out an own goal here a lot of pressure there they get a tie here and before you know it Orlando's racking up points and they're sitting at the middle of the table now this Kansas City side 
um, you asked if we were going to go the same way. I'm going to go with Kansas City in this win over at Orlando. Uh, it's the second meeting between these two. The first one came in like the second week of the regular season. May 14th, it was a 2-2 tie. Orlando scored first. Kansas City equalized. Then there's two goals in extra time. Uh, Orlando ends up winning on a penalty kick in the 90th minute plus six minute stoppage time. That was an incredibly exciting game early in the regular season. I don't think this game is going to be as exciting as that one. So I'm not popping my popcorn for this yet. But Kansas City, they are red hot right now. Seven game unbeaten streak. They've led, won their last three games with two shutouts. Um, the other one ended up being an own goal. So they really haven't conceded a goal scored by an opponent in at least three games. This Kansas City side is one that when we predicted they would be at five, top five in the standings, that was with Lynn Williams. That was with Sam yeah. Ewitt. That was um, not with CC Kaiser, who traded from Racing Louisville onto this side. And what Matt Potter has been able to do with this Kansas City side, and honestly, the longs and the ownership and what they're building off the field has been inspiring for players, for fans, for someone like me who's really watching from the outside. And I love to watch this Kansas City side play imposing their game as a mix of players on the pitch uh, with the young players in Elise Bennett and Alex Suera, Jenna Weinbrenner, uh, Victoria Pickett in the midfield doing so well. They're just such a fun team to win. Everyone in our chat right now, Casey baby, Casey should win. Casey. I um, love it. I'm going with it. Me too. I'm, I'm running with the masses. Kansas gets the win over Orlando in this one. And they're fun to watch. Listen, the chat, the chat is bringing the energy and I'm going to keep it going. I'm also going with Kansas city in in this one, this is a team that I looked at during this month and we wanted to see them mm-hmm. have a couple of statement games. I think, you know, in this time when a lot of teams were missing a lot of key players and they did just that. They got one more in July here to sort of knock things out. They're on a three game winning streak right now, a seven game unbeaten streak huge these are all things that are very very cool if you're on the kansas city roster because you're a player that's like probably riding that momentum quite frankly into this game against orlando pride you're saying listen let's keep it moving let's keep it going let's keep building on this and we're talking about all these great players who've been stepping up for kansas city but we got to also talk about Amy french she has been just lights out for this team especially as of late and I just, that alone, when looking at this matchup, Lisa, I was like, you know, let's just say Kansas City has an off day in front of goal. Let's just say, mm-hmm. you know, Kristen Hamilton has an off day. CC Kaiser is like, listen, I just, it's not in me today. Even with that, I just don't know how the attacking personnel available for Orlando get one past Eddie French right now. Mm-hmm. That is how good she has been in net for the current. So when I'm looking at all all the above, you know, sort of 1v1s on the pitch that we could see come to light or come to pass, I'm just giving every single advantage, quite frankly, to to the current in this one. And um, we'll see how it's chasing. Usually when it sort of looks like or has that feeling, sometimes the opposition comes out there and sort of smacks us in the mouth and say, "Not, not today. So I'm excited to see a competitive match between these two sides because, again, we're looking at two teams in different phases of the table. You're talking about a four point swing right now for the pride behind Angel City, I believe, to sort of start climbing and narrowing things to seventh and sixth place, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, they, they are a team that I'm looking at at the bottom half that are going to try to come out, maybe play with a sense of urgency. And now if we see them come out in this game and I don't see that from the first whistle, it's going to be a pretty long day, I think for, for Orlando pride. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm with you, Lisa, in this one, I looking at everything in front of us and, and sort of what the current have been doing on the pitch and some of the really strong individual performances that we see have seen during this month. I'm going Kansas city all the way. That's it for NWSL. We're going to close it out with some international soccer, though. Big games coming up in the Euros and Copa America. Let's start with Copa America. It's going to be Colombia and Brazil facing off for the Copa America Femenina Championship on Sunday, the 30th. You can catch all that action at 8 p.m. Eastern, I believe, 
if you're an American audience, you try to find it on various outlets. Typically, Fox Sports has been holding those or, or VIX. People have been using that. So take a look at it if you can. A couple of names people might be familiar with, right? We've been talking about their absence, quite frankly. The Vina and Caroline repping for Brazil. But the, there's some names that even if you aren't familiar with on the NWSL side of things that you should be paying attention to for Colombia. I'm talking about Lacey Santos. I say, though, these are some really important players for Colombia who have been putting together some really cool performances. So make sure you take a look at that if you get the chance. But we've also got the Euros, Lisa, coming off of some pretty intense semifinals as well. It's going to be England, the tournament host, taking on Germany in the final championship final of the Euros going to be an exciting time do we want to make picks for this one do we just just for fun do we just want to say yes, like, i want to make picks i want to talk about it. i want to make picks right. all all the thing thing because i think copa america is uh, with brazil and colombia this tournament has been fun really fun fantastic to watch in terms of how these teams got there um colombia it was a narrow win over argentina one nil in the semis to get to this final brazil it was easy it was like bam bam for them it's that's one of one of the craziest things because of all of the euros that were happening the CONCACAF, the afcon the copa america we're getting to see all of these international teams play uh, about a year out from the women's world cup so we're getting a really good look at how these competitions stack up against each other in their own sections of the world and yeah. when we look at maybe something like copa america or uh, excuse me something like CONCACAF w you see canada and the United States rise to the top. And in Copa America, it's Brazil that was really quickly the cream rising to the top of this tournament. And now that they face Colombia in the final, um, I have Brazil taking the win in this one. They've just been too dominant throughout this yeah. Copa America tournament. They've been scoring goals so seamlessly and easily, whereas Colombia's had to really fight for each win that they've put into place. Um, so between these two, I have Brazil in this one. What about you? Who do you have? I'm so excited for this game. I think when we're looking at sort of the history of Conmebol, Colombia has been, maybe if you haven't been keeping an eye on this region, perhaps quietly kind of taking control of that number two spot in terms of the rankings of their region. They've been chasing Brazil for a long time, and they are riding momentum in this tournament, I believe, as well. I mean, the scenes out of that semifinal when they punch their ticket through uh, to the cup final and also essentially, you know, getting the return back to the World Cup, just the emotion coming out, the, the, just the sheer joy of, of a win and but also just the relief in sort of checking off the, the list of things to do was, um, it was beautiful to, to see and, and witness and, I'm hopeful that Colombia will try to ride this momentum yeah. into the final, but there's something about, there's something to be said for the experience of it all. When you get down to these moments um, and Brazil has just simply been there yeah. many times um, and getting to Copa America Femenina final, being able to tie it all together and go ahead and and bring that win home. I mean there's a lot of there's a lot of I think different emotional things, different storylines coming in around Colombia, but I just think it's going to come down to to the experience, to the depth, to the yeah. skill. Brazil has looked very dangerous this entire tournament defensively undefeated, undefeated yeah, undefeated, yeah. no goals conceded. It is a tough Dragon to slay, I think, if you're Colombia. But I just, I'm going with Brazil in, in this one as well. I would love to, I'm, I'm, I love drama. So I would love to see it come down to, you know, extra time, penalties, all that stuff. Ooh, but yeah. I, think it could, I, I think Brazil could take it um, in regulation even. So so we'll see. How, how about the Euros, Lisa? What, who are you looking at in this one? So Euros is also incredibly exciting at this point right now. We've got M England versus Germany. I think we have to take a look at the big picture. This game is being played in Wembley Stadium in London. So a uh, max of 90 thousand fans and a majority of them are going to be rooting for England who have never won a Euros championship. So yeah. this is this is huge for England. They're hosting this um throughout this tournament they've been 
very good, progressively getting better and better each game. Um, they beat Sweden 4 nil to get to this final, which that was incredibly impressive to see for this English side. Now, Germany, oh, they are very, very good in this match. That's why like, I love making these predictions, and I can't wait to hear what you think about this because uh, Germany beat France 2-1 to one in the semifinal to get to this final. It was back and forth. Germany scored first, then they conceded within five minutes. Um, then they ended up getting the game winner. Alexandra Pop has just been incredible a uh, golden boot race right now so that's also uh, not only is this the euros final but it's the golden boot race final as well because heading into this um euros final between england and germany there's a big fight for the golden boot english england's beth mead has six goals and then pop for germany has scored in every single match so far in this euro tournament first player to do that huge and props to her and she has six goals uh also russo for england she's got four goals so she's kind of in that race a little bit for the golden boot um but this these two matchups in i think the fact that these two sides england and germany are playing in london gives the upper hand to england because uh the last two times these two teams played was in the arnold clark cup in germany england won three to one yes. shout out to arnold clark Shout out, shout out to Arnold Clark. I <laughs> who do you have in this one? I, I haven't even given my prediction yet. Who do you no, have? No, no, no. You can't do all that, brother, but then not give the pick. I want to hear your pick. I I I think Germany. I, okay. I don't know. I think Germany, though. There's something in my gut. Honestly, like I'm still right now at this point, like going back and forth in my head, like who could win? Because England, the Millie Bright combination with going up against pop and um I don't know. I don't know. England being at home in London, yeah. playing in Wembley, how f- well they've done and how much they've grown throughout this tournament. But Germany is just a force right now. And I think they like that pressure. I'm going with Germany. And listen, everything is there I know. for England to have a storybook ending. And with that comes a certain amount of pressure and responsibility. And I'm wondering if this is the game where maybe it doesn't go well. They had a test against Spain. And they have that match in hand that they can look at and say, listen, we could have crumbled. We didn't. We came out on top. This is also a Spanish side that was missing two of their most prominent players in a Jenny Hermoso and Alexia Puteas. And their sort of second half surge was, I think a mix of, you know, a bit their ability and skill to make their adjustments and also the team that they were playing in front of them. Mm-hmm. And then to sort of go into a semifinal against Sweden, which that opening 25 minutes in that semifinal sort of felt a little bit different. And I could look and see, I was like, okay, are there some nerves going on here? And I think that that came with it when we're talking about the pressures of being a tournament host and, and the hopes of a nation, right? All the constant, you know, is it coming home, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it took a little while for England to finally say enough <laughs> uh, because Sweden looked like the team at certain points in those opening 25 minutes that they were going to try and finally play the type of soccer that I think people were looking for Sweden to sort of kick it into gear because we saw the Sweden side sort of do that during the Olympics and we didn't, you know, really see that so much during, during the Euros and it looked like they were going to do it, but England had other plans. Delightful to sort of see this huge scoreline. I think you could see how much it meant to, to the lionesses. And I think when we're looking about, coolness under pressure i think i saw more of that from germany against the uh, france in that semifinal. so when i'm looking at these two teams i'm also going with germany because Ooh. germany Purple. I, they had they have a ton of depth on their bench they're two very good teams two heavyweights i think they're both hitting their stride going into this final i think their spoiler written all over this one and if there is going to be a team that does it it's going to be 
this Germany side. And, they, and the, the pressure these, for England is just a little too much. It's, 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 listen, never underestimate that. It's, it's tough. It's a pressure cooker. It's a cooker. Um, they, they are both entering this, this final now that, you know, on these sort of really good runs, but they've each now have a game that they could look at and say, okay, we conceded a goal because they hadn't conceded a goal up until their, their knockout rounds. Yeah. But I just really like what we're seeing from Germany defensively. And I think that's ultimately what gets teams championships. Like you got to score the goals. Of course, that's what ends up making the difference. But there's something about being put in a moment of pressure to sort of close things out. And we have seen a very, very organized German side. I'm loving the center back duo that we've seen throughout the majority of uh, of this tournament from uh, from Germany. We, we saw something different, I think, in one of the earlier group stages. But but Heinrich. Hedring just sort of holding things down with Froms in, in, in net has just been very impressive to me. And I think sort of watching them go up against France, who were providing a bit of chaos for them uh, and got the breakthrough ultimately to sort of take a goal back, I think was important for Germany to sort of have that kind of, you know, going into this final and sort of seeing how they came out of that. And, you know, this is watching Alexandra Pop compete in her first euros at her age because her the injuries (laughs) that have impacted her career in cycles prior is a very compelling storyline and she is just playing i think with a certain type of energy right now that germany just keeps feeding off of it's freedom almost from pop and and she'll say that in terms of like golden boot race um after the semi-final interview she was like i'm not in this to score the goals like yeah it's fun to score but i'm only scoring these goals (laughs) because everyone else is getting me the ball they're winning it on defense they're playing me these great passes and she's like i want to win the euros so i agree do you think that pop's going to get the golden boot oh man wouldn't it be something that this we had this final and neither Beth Mead or Alexandra <laughs> Pop so, got the goal? So tiebreaker, oh, if that happens, tiebreakers for the golden boot, if um it ends on a tie, the second one will go to um it goes to assists. Yeah. Who has the most assists, and then which player has the least minutes played? Yeah. So of course I know. we'll see. I would I would love I would love for there to be a clear Golden Boot winner have one of them strike through on goal um, in like extra time, you know. Yeah, no, no, we'll 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 see. I, I don't know if there's going to be too much mix up in terms of lineups going into this one. I think both coaches are going to probably stay with what what we've seen, you know. And if that's the case, perhaps England has the X factor and somebody like an uh, Alicia Russo, you know, to sort of seeing her kind of come into games and and, and do what she does. But I'm also equally impressive by the youth of Germany as well. I mean, Lena Oberdorf is having a fantastic, just really impressive kind of, you know, tournament right now for Germany. So I'm very excited for each of these finals. You know, hopefully we get to see some exciting games out of Copa America and the Euros. Uh, we're both going with Brazil. We're both going with Germany. We'll see uh, where we're correct or incorrect. And we'll talk about that as well alongside our predictions for NWSL matches. But make sure you all tune in. So that you can, uh, you know, make sure you know what we're chatting a little bit about when we reunite and talk about all these games in the recap. Thank you all so much for joining us on today's live. We went a little long, so thanks for hanging in there. Uh, if you like what you heard and you want to support us, just want to remind you that voting ends on July 31st. So please vote for Attacking Third for the best female hosted podcast category in the People's Choice Podcast Awards. And at worldsoccertalk.com for best podcast. You can find us on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at Attacking Third. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you listen to your shows. You can subscribe to us on YouTube at youtube.com slash Attacking Third. And make sure you hang out with us when we're back to chat about all of these games and more in the recap. For Sandra and Lisa Roman, this was Attacking Third. <laughs>